In this video, we're going to be working on this Hitachi roofing nailer. Last time I used it, it was skipping nails. It would fire about every third or fourth nail, and it was just really frustrating. So we're going to go ahead and change out the O-rings coming up right now. All right, so since I'm going to be replacing most of the O-rings, this video should address other problems other than the nailers not hitting on every nail. Also, you might want to use a very clean work area. That way you can organize all your parts and you don't lose anything. Pretty much all of the heads on all these screws are all four millimeter uh, Allen or hex head. Let's go ahead and pull the top off of here right now. I like to take everything apart before I go ahead and try to figure out which O-rings go where. Carefully go ahead and pull the top of the head off. If it wants to stick on you, just be careful not to rip this gasket, otherwise you'll be looking for a new one. This one is in fine shape, so uh, we're gonna reuse that. All right, so for this next part right here, go ahead and take two of the screws that you just took out of the head and thread them right back in here, and then take some pliers and kind of wiggle it back and forth till it comes out. All right, so for this next part, you'll probably want to take something and wipe the oil off of the cylinder right here so you can get a better grip on it. And just grab it with your thumbs and pull up, and it should come out. If it doesn't come out, you can take something like a piece of rubber and a pair of pliers and try to pull it out that way to get it started. But uh, you really don't want to gouge that up. This is pretty soft aluminum. Now this piece here can sometimes be a real bear, I'll tell you. But if you can, just put your fingers in there and pull up so like that. It's got to come out straight. It's a tight fit. And if it gets crooked, it's not going to want to come out. Now for this next piece, you're not going to want to try to pull your piston out just yet. That's not going to come out the top. There's a plastic piece on the bottom that's going to keep that from happening. So just hold off on that. Let's go ahead and get the magazine off. There's just a Phillips screw on this side and a nut on the other side inside of a groove. Get that screw out of the way and this just wiggles right out like so. And then I'll go ahead and put the screw back so I don't lose track of that. And there's also a little plastic washer that goes on the screw head side. Don't lose that either. All right, so we just got four screws right here that's holding this bottom onto our housing. But before we can get those off of there, I'd like to take this plate off right here. One of these screws is totally blocked, so this is in the way. Keep these screws separate that go to this plate. They're short. All right, let's get these four screws out of here. And just keep them with the bumpers, it makes it easier. All right, so to get this piece out of here, yeah, you can take this pin out right here, but you don't really have to. Just make sure your piston is all the way up. And then just do that. You might take a little bit of patience, but it'll come out. Now we can get our piston out. Just go ahead and push it from the inside, and you can even pull it from the outside, and it comes right out. All right, now we've got just a blank housing right here. We do have the parts for the trigger still in there. You can do that if you want to. The kit does come with the O-rings for that, but I'm going to leave mine alone. It's working fine. And that goes for this head too. There's some parts up in there that I believe the kit comes with that could be changed, but I'm not gonna bother with that. It's not broke, so don't fix it. So the only thing left is this feeder right here. Let's finish taking this apart. Still four millimeter. Keep these screws separate as well. Be careful here, there's a gasket here. I'll just put the screws right with that cover. All right, so we gotta go ahead and get this part out right here. Now, if you notice here, there's a spring right here. These springs do have a tendency to break. This one is not broken, uh, so keep that in mind. If yours is broken when you get this apart, we have a keeper on the end. Just go ahead and pry him off of there. Like so. Now we can push the pin out. Like 
like that. Pull the spring out. Now, a lot of times, if these things have been used a lot, that feeder spring will make a groove right here in this plunger where that spring was resting right here. This one has done a lot more sitting than being used. I think because it was sitting so long, the gaskets just got hard, and that's why it wasn't feeding very good. But if that happens, if you get a notch right here, when you put this piece back, you can actually flip it 180 degrees so that the pin will still go through right through here. And that'll, that'll give you a new fresh meat right there to let that spring rest on. Go ahead and push this out. Just like that. And as you can see, we've got uh, three more O-rings right here. Go ahead and get this piece out just so we can clean it. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is get all our old O-rings off so we can get the parts cleaned up real nice. Now, this is the big secret that I like to use to make an easy job even easier, especially if you don't do this every day. Now, I made a little map right here of where all my O-rings go. I'm going to put all my old O-rings right on top of this map. I actually drew, you know, life-size pictures of all my parts that way, when I take the O-rings off, I know they go right to that part. So we're going to start right here with the feeder plunger. So we have a small one and a medium. I'm just using a little poker right here to get these off. And then this medium size one goes right on the end right there. Now I know those three go to that. So I'll put this in my parts bucket to clean up. See how good that works? There's no way to mistake them. Just make sure and not bump your O-rings or let them get turned over. That's our inner one. And then this I wrote down that these inners have two different sizes on this. So I'm going to go ahead and do this to the rest of the parts and put them out on my map, and I'll be right back. I did want to make a special note right here about this O-ring in the bottom of the housing. I believe this may be responsible for my problem right here because it, it controls the uh, feeder air pressure, I'm pretty sure. So that's an important one. Don't forget about that one. So I just wanted to make a special note right here about the new O-rings. I kind of did the same thing with those. I mapped them out according to the diagram that the uh, manufacturer sent along with the O-rings. Now this one is the Reliability Proven O-Ring Kit. I got this one from the O-Ring store, and I'll post a link below. I am not associated with them whatsoever. That just happens to be the one I'm using. I think it was around 20 bucks at the time of the video. I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with some brake clean. Now this might leave a residue, so I'm gonna wipe this off again when I get it back in the house. Need to clean out all these little crook nooks and crannies right here. All this stuff, just clean it all up the best you can. Get everything off of it. Make it look like a brand new piece of aluminum if you can. If the toothbrush doesn't work, you can gently use a wire wheel or a wire toothbrush. I don't have a wire toothbrush, so I'm using this. But don't do it too aggressively or you'll scratch that aluminum up. Clean the inside of this thing up. Make sure these airways right here aren't blocked. Then once you're done with all that, take some off. Doing the same thing with this one. Make sure all the little nooks and crannies are clear. Free from any debris because that debris will wind up right back, eat up your O-rings. I'm going to do the same procedure to all the rest of the parts, including the housing, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got all my parts cleaned up. Now, I wanted to point out a couple of things on these parts before we put it back together. This is kind of like a rubber band right here that goes around this area right here, and we have all these little holes right here. Well, when you're cleaning that up, go ahead and pull that, gently pull that rubber band down like that so you can inspect these holes and make sure none of that's clogged up with debris or anything. Those should be perfectly clear. The kit does not come with that, so be careful with it not to break it. On this little part right here, make sure these teeth are intact. This is your feeder right here that grabs the nails and pulls them forward. 
Make sure of that. Same thing here on your feeder. Make sure these little springs are intact right here. Otherwise, you'll have a problem with feeding right there. All right, let's get this puppy back together. So we're going to start right here with our plunger. Our little baby O-ring goes in the front right here. This one is green and blue according to that kit right there. Then we have a large one in the middle. That one is red. And this medium-sized one was on the end, just right there. So I'm going to use this silicone grease to put all this back together. This stuff is actually made for O-rings. You don't want to try to put this back together dry because you're going to have problems with that. You'll destroy the new O-rings. So we're going to go ahead and put a coating on here. Don't be afraid to use this stuff. It's not going to hurt it if you got a lot on there. And I'm going to put some inside of here. And then kind of spread it around with a Q-tip and push that through gently. Let's put our piece back right here before we push our plunger all the way up. And I went ahead and pre-lubed that with some grease right on in here on the contact surfaces. Now we can put our spring back. Now remember I said, if you've got a groove in here because of the spring wear, go ahead and flip that around the other way and then you'll have a fresh piece of metal right there. All right, so the little fingers of the spring needs to go down in these little grooves right here. And the keeper is gonna go on the bottom. This part here is the bottom where your safety catch goes. So go ahead and push this pin down like so. And then the kit does come with a new keeper. It just slides over the end right here into a groove. And let's put our end piece on. Taking a look at that gasket to make sure it's in good shape, and mine is. I'll go ahead and put a little bit of grease on the inside of that so that O-ring is going to be okay. And then we'll push that on. There's an O-ring right here on the end. Just like that. And this one gets those short screws. Let's put our safety back on, making sure our return spring is right here. It goes up into this little um, groove right here. All right, so let's not forget about our O-ring in the bottom of the housing here before we put the piston back in there. Right in there, just like so. Go ahead and give it some lube. Now that bottom of the housing O-ring was color-coded red, according to this uh, particular kit anyway. And I've already put the new one on the piston right here, and it was color-coded red as well. Now right here, you might want to observe on this... Um, striker, whatever this, you know, it hits the nail. The one that's got the groove that goes all the way through, that faces towards the back, you know, towards the handle. All right, we're gonna put our bottom piece back on. Make sure and inspect your gasket that goes on the bottom there. This one is in good shape. And I went ahead and put some grease down in here as well as on the striker pin. Put this in the same way we took it out. Now that pin does come out, but it's just easier just to leave it in there and then just do it like this. Now remember, when we took it apart, the piston had to be all the way up. So it's the same thing here. All right, I got one bumper on there. Now there's a little rubber piece that went between the feeder and the magazine. So just put that on there like so. All right, we're almost done. So our smallest one goes in here. This one actually doesn't have a color code. The other inner one is green and yellow. I'm giving you these color codes, that way it'll help you if you wind up getting the same kit. There's our other one. And then these two outer ones are the same, and they're both blue and orange. Now this is that piece that was kind of difficult to get out, and it's a tight fit. So I would add extra lube to this one to make sure you don't tear these O-rings, because if you do, it's going to be a whole lot of sadness. And we'll make sure and add plenty to the inside of the housing here. 
Now it doesn't seem to matter which way this is turned. Try to keep it as straight as possible. There we go. It's a pain, let me tell you. That one's hard. So when you put the cylinder back, don't forget about the spring and don't forget to put your rubber band back over the holes right here. And also get a pretty good bit of lube on the bottom. I've already put it on there. That way when you push it onto the piston, it'll go on. Just like so. Last but not least, two more O-rings right here, outer and inner. The outer one looks like it's uh, blue and orange. I think it's the same one that went on the outer one down here. And the uh, smaller one doesn't have a color. And there we go. That is it. Not forgetting about our gasket. Now there's a couple of O-rings left in the kit. And like I said, they go to the head and they go to the trigger, but I didn't fool with that as you can see. And just one more piece right here. Don't forget to put that plate back right there. And let's give it a little test and see what we got. Now, normally when you uh, have these things all apart like this and you put air to them for the first time, kind of has to reset the gun. So uh, we'll see how that goes right here in just a second. Now, you'll want to do this without any nails in it for the first time. So let's just see how it works. Well, it didn't give me any problem. Let's see if it... Yep, 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 yep. All right, let's see if she's working. Can't beat that, it's working perfect. Don't forget to oil your gun before you use it. Hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.